Okay, I've been at this off camera for about a, about an hour and a half. I've worked down to some pretty smooth files on both of these. Then I checked their baffle centerline profile using, you know, my dial gauge like I said I would, and I came up with a, a plot. I'll zoom in on my computer. So, what I have here is one of the uh, blanks. This orientation, this is the baffle profile. The target is the red line, and the current status of this one is the blue line. So I didn't overshoot it yet. I actually have to lower the baffle in, in you know this region a little bit further. I had about the same kind of picture with the with the other mouthpiece and I've been working on that one a little longer. Let me click over to that one. Okay, it's kinda right here and you can see that um, let me zoom a little further on that. I'm not sure that'll help a whole lot, but now we're all the way in. The blue line is almost right on the red. Um, I'll, I'll go a little further, but the amount that we're off in this position here is only on the order of ten thousandths of an inch. So um, uh, I may just go and start sanding. I already started some sanding, and it, it, that's probably only going to take it down five, but we'll see. That might be close enough. <sighs> okay. Let me pull this out again. I'll show you what tools I've been using. So, I've gotten down to some. Let's see, the, the one that I've been working on the most, I'm calling number one. I wrote, you know, one and two in the bite plate area. So, this one. You know, to get the baffle down further, I've been using a combination of this uh, square file down the middle. I'm not so much worried about going all the way out to the edges. I'll leave a little round fillet there. A combination of the square one and this half round in that area right there. And then what I just started doing is resorting to a sanding stick with a coarse sandpaper on there. So this is in between shaping and finishing. It gets out the file marks, but it still can lower the material, in this case brass. I have these, this is like a, about 100 and, 110 grit on there. And I've got two pads on this one, which makes it a little flatter, stiffer, but I also have the same with a single pad, which is better for going up inside the side walls and the curved areas. And one end is angled and the other end is straight. And these are on my website for sale. I don't make a lot of money off of them. It's pretty much selling at cost for the amount of labor it takes for me to make them. So, and when you start sanding, you you can find out whatever low spots are left, and there's not many of them. This is, looks pretty good. Up uh, up to the side walls, it gets a little rough in some of those areas. I may have to do some fine work. I've also, you know, some of the side rails are a little nicked up, but when I do my facing work. Uh, hopefully that'll that'll clean up without me having to cut too deep. Okay, let me check uh, a couple of these readings. Yeah. My 
tip opening is still 104 and then I go down to you know, I have a mark like I said I have a mark here you can't really see in a whole lot of detail but I because they're, they're scratched on here but I, they're they're at zero where I drew my paint mark and then I slid down and the first reading is three millimeters from the tip this is just an increment which I found useful it's not a three down there is point one one two then going down to my next mark I went seven millimeters from the tip and that's point one three then the next mark down each one gets a little a little farther increment 12 millimeters from the tip that's 160.16 and the next one down I like to do is 18 millimeters from the tip and that is 215 that's inches from the table and the last one is 25 millimeters so that's about an inch from the tip and I get a 1, 2, 3, 0, 8 depth then I actually take I haven't messed with that well, I might as well check it there's a uh, depth I take from the end of the window using the end of my calipers the depth probe there and it's 591 and I that's at whatever the window length is I have that at about 41 and a half millimeters from the end and that hasn't changed so still not totally on spec but within a few thousands and uh, probably good enough and uh, you know I have much more work to do on on this one and you know, by eye, they're pretty, pretty darn close to. This one's close to where we got to be. Um, you know, still got to do facing work on it and body work on the outside. This one got a ways to go, so I have to tear into that one a, a bit more. So I'll do that some more uh, off camera and get back to you. Okay, I actually went back to the uh, high-speed rotary tool since I had 20 thousandths to go off one of these and I decided I didn't want to do that all by hand so uh, I did some more work off it and then did some more file work and sanding work. I used my one, 110 and uh, 220 sticks on both of these. Uh, one of them is right on spec. Uh, the other one is about 10 thousandths high. Uh, a little bit more arch here. I decided to leave it that way in case somebody wants to try them each one out and figure out which one they like a little better. Um, like I said, I'm planning to make these both 110 openings. Uh, next, let me see. I haven't totally finished the interior. I usually go a little finer with that. I've got some scratches still on the inside of this one same thing here so I'll work a little bit more with the the rougher stand sandpapers but I won't do the final sanding until after <coughs> refacing work so next I'll start working on the body I use a belt sander with a lot of different um, sanding grits very fine and uh, to smooth this out and uh, you know take it from this to this. You can see the getting closer. Hello! I'm now going to move on to some body finishing. This is a, a one inch wide belt sander by 30 inch long. Uh, Harbor Freight, very inexpensive, a good workhorse tool. Uh, the belts I get from a company called Kling Spore. They have a nice selection. Um, for all around work, I have a couple coarse, coarse belts here. They're um, which 
what grits do we have here? This is a 220. It says AA220. I don't know what the AA stands for. There's a bunch of different scales for for these uh, belts. This one's a little coarser, AA150. I got them from, I believe, Harbor Freight. Uh, they're too uh, coarse for body finishing. These are more for shaping things like bike plates and so, the coarsest belt that I start with, this yellow one is labeled P220. P is a, a scale. 220 grit doesn't mean the same on all scales. Um, so, there's two or three scales internationally that are used, but this is where I start. There's usually an arrow on these, tell you which way to put them on. Keep the cover off the side of my belt sander since I change belts so often. So what I'm trying to do is this is rough machine. It's pretty smooth for coming off a machine, but you still can see some uh, you know lines from uh, the motion of the tooling on it uh, and where it was clamped in fixtures. So all the curved surfaces sand pretty well on here. The flat surfaces do not because when you press into the belt, the belt curves and doesn't hit the flat surfaces. So I'm going to have to do some of these by hand unless I press very lightly. See that it's already cleaned up a lot of where it was gripped. There is two areas that I work with. There's a flat area down here I don't use very much for mouthpiece. This area I use because it bows in a little as you as you push and it's it's better at getting those curved surfaces. See what I was trying to illustrate that from here to here um, the flat surfaces are not all cleaning up. I've got this ridge pretty good. There is one deep machining mark scratch here that I have to go down further to get rid of. And um, so other than that, I'm not even going to use this grit on the shank because it's pretty smooth and real compared to the body I'll I'll polish that up with some of the finer grits. I have used some of these coarser belts on the table actually when somebody wanted a very open tip. Uh, this blank is made at about 104, 105. If somebody wanted like a 120 I actually have to tilt the table and I could do that by hand um, 
with facing, but if I have to go a lot, I will put a coarser belt on and actually tilt the table some like this. It's uh, not an easy thing to do and, and keep flat, so I do a little of that here, and then I have to go by hand and flatten it because it will be wavy from that operation, but it does take a lot of material out and uh, saves me some time overall. So let me go after this scratch a little bit more. This one says P400. So I was doing some shaping with that first, first belt. And from now on, I'm mostly doing just sanding to try to get out the scratches from the previous belt. Make it as smooth as I can. Planning to open this up a little at the tip, um, so I have to be careful I don't accidentally nick the corners down to where there's a sharp material there, and then when I open it up, there won't be enough material there. But I do like to round this area here and here, just more comfortable in the embouchure. Okay, let's move on to the next one down. I got two more belts. Now these go to a different type. I don't remember the history because I bought these several years ago. But this says 400 MX and it doesn't have an arrow on it uh, and it's it's just a finer finer belt. Wait, let me get it right. That's, two, uh, that's 400 and this one's 240. Let me do the 240 next. This feels like it's uh, almost like on, on a cloth belt. So I didn't do too bad on the straight parts. It's just on this side a very narrow line down the middle. This one's a little wider. I could try to see if I can get more of that out. And it's just 
not happening very well. I'll do that by hand. See, I left the bite plate kind of rough area. That'll help it uh, grip in. But it's uh, pretty amazing the difference. That's the one that I've been working on. Very nicely blended the edges. And you can see how much of a change that is. Buff down. It says Italy on here. Made that a little lighter. I wasn't trying to take that out. Plus this is a little tarnished, so it kind of, uh, part of what you're seeing is just it's a little shinier, but it's it's not really a buffed finish yet. I'll, uh, I will take it to a buffing wheel after I do the facing. Then it'll be off the plating. Okay, I'm going to do the other one, then resume on the workbench. If you've watched any of my other videos, this part is pretty much the same as other refacing jobs. I measured up the facing of uh, this one. This is the my number one blank. I need to make one of these at 105 and the other one around 110. So this one is pretty close to 10. I just measured this one up. It's got a 103 tip, and I wanted to make the uh, facing length uh, 48 and put an elliptical curve on it. So here it's measured up. Where it is now is the dark blue line and my target is the magenta line. So actually it's so close to the curve you can't really see it a difference here. It's a little got a little bit of a bump right here shown by my red numbers in the earlier facing and the tip needs to is too flat. Um, so I need to flip that up and it's a little crooked there but not a lot of work. Uh, this should come in pretty quickly. The other one probably is going to be more work. So I need to make sure the table's flat. It looks pretty good. I must have worked on that a little bit before. Actually, a couple low spots here and here, so even though my initial measurements showed not much work after I flatten that out, I may have a little more to do. So, let me vacuum. starting to clean up all the way up to here. You can't see it very much, but I can see it on the video, but uh, it's shiny all the way up to here. So there's no low spots. I'll have to remeasure. I can lightly clean all the rails. Open the tip a little. Needs to create a little thicker tip rail anyhow. Which way did I have to lean it? Said I had a, a high spot here, but now that I've worked on it a little bit, I should double check that. My largest feeler is a 93 that I used on this facing. I have larger feelers than that. That's the largest one that I could use here. 
Uh, evened up quite a bit. Yeah. And now the facing length from flattening the table is about 46. I need that to be 48. Let's check a midpoint somewhere. This 26 feeler should go down about 26 and a half and it only goes down to 26. So I will be having to clean up the facing and take it down a little more. I didn't measure the tip opening again. Let's try that. So that still has to open up. It's down to 102 after flattening the table. Which is a good thing because I, I needed to you know make a nicer tip shape and tip rail shape. So you see as I open up the tip tip rail gets a little thicker, gives me some real estate to work with. I use these uh, metal reed templates to shape the tip, which is pretty good to start with, but I'll, I'll adjust that a little, take a little bit of material off here, off there to get, get the shape to match a reed. Average reed shape better. Inside the tip rail to create a thickness that we like. So even though the initial me measurements were very close, after flattening the table, they got off my target measurements. So it's not uncommon to take one or two hours to dial in a mouthpiece, even if it measures initially close. Okay, now this tip opening should measure a bit larger since I open the tip a little and thin the tip rail in fact I'm getting 106 I may have overshot it a little which is fine sometimes that happened or what I could do is is uh, take another thousandth off the table and get that right at 105 but I'm not that picky I will mark it 104 to 106 if that's what it is, if it comes in good at 106, I'll leave it there. Okay, I'll take another set of measurements and see where we're at. Stay tuned. Okay, I have the facing dialed in on this. Pretty nice. I just uh, I forgot to work on this uh, cosmetically, this body. I'm going to try clean it up with a 600 grit. That's all it seems to need. Yeah, I had some sanding marks this way from the belt barely touching it but not enough to clean itself up with the, with the finer finer ones the plater I send this to also buffs it so as long as I get it kind of close he, do, he doesn't have to do much work So, 
So that's the finest sandpaper I use when I reface. Some people go finer, but I haven't found a need to. After I see nothing but sanding marks from this sandpaper, I switch to 40 steel wool. I may even go over the entire piece with this, but it doesn't really need it. Like I said, he's going to buff it. After doing that, I might see some cosmetic areas that need a little help. The plating will not cover up little scratches. It pretty much is a thin layer that, you know, reveals everything underneath it. Tiny scratches like from steel wool it will cover up, but not from sandpaper. So, you can see how that looks. That looks pretty good. I may buff it a little myself. Like I said, I trust my plater. He's got a got a sack shop, so he's done does all my mouthpieces and knows how to properly clean them up. We're gonna tip a little. Okay, next I'll have to show you how I make the bite plate. I'll have to mark it also for uh, serial number and uh, tip opening.